Amen. And we usually start out with by saying uh, hello to our online church family. So on one, two, three, we'll say good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Good deal. Man, God is using that in a mighty way. I tell you what, God is using everything that we lift up to him in glory. He can bless again. He can make a whole lot out of a little. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, the sermon title, I think, will kind of really set the course of what we're going to do here. It's called The Journey is Real. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Do we struggle sometimes, even as Christians? Amen. I'm glad because, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not glad that we struggle. I'm glad everybody, we're, we're, this is what we need to hear today, right? I was listening clear. But, you know, I tell you what, I, I hope this comes out right by saying this. Yes, we struggle, and that's okay. Because we got victory in Jesus, amen? It doesn't end there. It doesn't end with the struggle. You know what I'm saying? That's just where we're passing through. I'll tell you what, I heard, I heard a crazy little joke. I'm going to share this with you. I'm not a good joke teller, but there was a guy that looked at the newspaper every day. And, man, he was a rascal. And he was looking in, in the newspaper, and one day he looked at the death notices, and he said, man, I'm in here. I'm in the death notices, right? So he calls his buddy up, and he says, hey, did you read the paper today? He goes, I sure did. He said, I was in the death notices. He said, yeah, I know, and I know where you're calling from, too. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, wow, I wonder what my friends would say. <laughs> so just a little icebreaker there. I heard that. I thought, man, that's pretty cool. Well, you know, sometimes, man, this journey is rough. It can be frustrating. It can be overwhelming. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to try to walk us through that today and give us encouragement in what God has to say. Amen? So we do feel the struggle of life from time to time. If that's so, let me hear you say amen. There are ups and downs and in-betweens, bumps and bruises and stuff, and the journey is real. It's not always easy. I think that's what people sometimes, if they don't get the full picture of the gospel and understand what, what Christ has done for us and that we're walking with him, right, and what he, how he dealt with things when he was here, let me say, if, if they persecuted Jesus, what do you think they're going to do to you? You're going to be on the same team, aren't you? You know? I think a lot of times people think, well, I prayed this prayer, and now everything's wonderful. No. Have you put your faith and trust in what, what Jesus Christ has done on that? And then we begin to walk. So I want to encourage you with that today, because I tell you what, that gives us hope. Anybody got any hope in here today? So the journey is not always easy. Amen. The journey is not always fun. It's not just a complete comfort ride. You know, it's not the lazy boy life. He just kicked back. Everything's on autopilot, right? There's a lot of things going on in our life. <coughs> and if you're in a season of your life and it's like that and it's kind of hanging in there, good. Buckle up. Amen. But if you're in a season of your life where it's getting a little turbulent, hold on and keep looking up. Because I'm going to tell you today's message is for everybody, all right? So, if you got your Bibles with you, I'm going to encourage you. We're going to be in Romans chapter 7. And many of you all know that that's, a, that's a, a really interesting chapter, okay? And our scripture here is in Romans seven fourteen. But I've got to do a lot of unpacking to try to get us to where we're going. Now, how many people have ever read the book or heard the story about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Most people know that story. Dr. Jekyll was a nice guy, a mild-mannered guy, and he had this, this plan that he would make this magic potion and he, would become, he could become another person. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. But anyway, in the movie and in the, in the books and stuff, he takes it, y'all remember that he's choking and everything else, and he turns into this other guy, Mr. Hyde. How many know Mr. Hyde was not a nice guy? He was like the total opposite of Dr. Jekyll. And what we start seeing is, is some really interesting stuff. So I did a little research on that. And, and I was studying on through there. And they said that the guy that did this movie, uh, the guy's name is Robert Louis Stevenson, was a Christian. And they asked him, where in the world did you get that background? Where did you get the story from? He said, from my own life. He said, well, was he kind of schizo or whatever? They said, no. He had been spending time in the Word. And he saw how Paul spoke about his own life in chapter 7. Why do I do the things that I do when I know I shouldn't do the things that I do? That's Buckrow translation for what he's going to say here in a minute. But have you ever felt like that? There can be times you say, but I'm a Christian. Why did I just pull that stunt? Oh, my gosh, I'm going to pray for all y'all. Am I the only guy? Yeah. <laughs> you just go, I can't believe that. Let me tell you, the journey is real, but God is good. Amen? So we look at this in chapter 7. And what's actually happening, if I take that little bit from the movie and kind of pull it together to help us get our minds around that, what was really going on was there, was there was two opposite things going on in this guy's life. Does that sound like the new birth and the old, old you? Amen? You know, we, we have two natures, if you look at this at one time. From Adam, we got born into what? Sin. But through our relationship with Christ, now we're in righteousness. Amen? But how many know that flesh still creeps up a little bit, right? Yes, it does. Yeah, I'm telling you, 
It does. And you know, when you start looking and Googling stuff like the, the, the struggle is real and stuff like that, I was looking around, the, the struggle is real, you know, just like 5.5 times you see that, you know? But see, some people think the struggle is real. Man, I can't believe I, I, I really was going to eat that chocolate cake. No, that ain't a struggle I'm talking about. I'm talking about when the doctor report comes in and it's not real good. I'm talking about when your wife says she doesn't want to be married anymore. I'm talking about when the job says we don't need you anymore. I'm talking about those things that are real deal things. And let me tell you, we're going to speak to those issues today. But what happens is, inch by inch, just like in that, in that, in that movie, let's go back to the movie. Inch by inch, what was happening, those two natures were coming together. In that old nature, or in our case, but in, that, in, the, in the movie... He was trying to take over. He was trying to rear his, his head, right? Right? He tried to rear that head up, man, and do the things that, that, that Dr. Jekyll didn't want to do. And I'm going to tell you what. Sometimes we find that that happens in our life, too, as Christians. Now, we are secure in Christ. We have been saved. We've been sealed with the Spirit. But guess what? We've still got to renew our minds and crucify the flesh each day. Amen? I'm going to tell you what. That's crazy, man. Have you ever seen, go out to a church parking lot where they got a lot of traffic or something like that. And then the guy with the big finger going like this, the rubber finger going like this. Let him leave early and see what happens. You'll see what those people believe sometimes. Get out of the way. What are you doing? Wait a minute. You know? Because sometimes we default. I, the guys always say, what do you say, buddy? What do you say? We default to the negative. We default to the natural, man. You want to see how fast that is? Let somebody step on your big toe. Scratch your new car. You know, you say, oh, that's great. That's all right. I got another side of the car. You know, you go, can you believe that? Do you know how much this costs? And, and, and so what I hope is, as we go through this, I'm not condoning that. I'm just addressing that. We're just being real about it. And how do we walk through that? And let's look at some of the great examples through the Bible and what, how they work with this. So when we look at what Paul says here, take a look at this. Let's read this. It says in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, and I kind of try to condense some of these verses. If you get a chance this week, read that. Uh, Romans chapter 7, but don't stop there. Go to chapter 8, because it gets better as we go, okay? So he goes on here, he says, The trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human and a slave to sin. What in the world is he talking about? Now, how many know Paul was a Pharisee, right, early on, when he was Saul? And they believed in the law, Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, thou shalt not this. And he says, you know what? He thought, man, I'm keeping all the rules. See, that's religion. Religion, you keep all, I got to keep the rules. I got to do this. I got to do this. And it's really rigid. But see, what we have today through Jesus Christ is a relationship. Somebody say amen. We have a relationship. We are under grace. So does that mean the law doesn't do any good? No, the law was actually given to show us that we need a Savior. We'll walk through that today, too. So that's a good thing. But the struggle is real. And what was happening in, in many times in his life, he was seeing the two natures. Even now, how many know when you look back and you study the life of Paul, you're thinking, man, he is a rock star Christian. I mean, this cat wrote 13 of the, of the New Testament books. God's using him. He had some encounters with God, right? So surely, you know, he, he's really plugged in. He's not going to have any trouble with life. Read chapter 7. <laughs> Amen. And this is what he starts coming face to face. He's like, man, I didn't even know. Matter of fact, there's the scripture that says, he said, if it was not for the law, I wouldn't even know my sin. I, I kind of put it into th this term. If you drive up and down this street here and there's no stop sign on it, you just drive at any speed you want. Or, or speed limit sign, I should say. But if they come out there and put a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign and said, this is the safe speed, and you go over that, guess what? You broke the law, right? It's given to let us know this is this is. Right. This is, this is a clear path. Now, God didn't give us the Ten Commandments because he thought we could live up to it, right? That's why Jesus came not to abolish the law, but what? To fulfill it. Amen? To fulfill the law. It's getting better all the time, isn't it? He came to fulfill the law. But what happens is when we look at that, it also, there's, there's several things. God gave the law because it's, it's holy, right? It shows his righteousness. He says, here we go. This is what, we, this is what, this is, this is what we're shooting for. And what we find out is, we can shoot all day, but we're going to fall short. Anybody encouraged yet? <laughs> you will be by the time we're done. But see, wouldn't it be something if every time you thought, man, oh, I messed up, I'm out. When Jesus came and gave his life, he fulfilled the law. When we put our faith and trust in him, he, he gave his life, shed his blood to purchase us out of that sin debt. Amen? Does that mean that you will never sin again? Amen. But you know, we ought to be quick to repent. Amen? 
turned back and said, Lord, I need some help in these areas. I did a wedding yesterday, beautiful wedding, met a lot of people and stuff. It was over at Virginia Beach, the Founder Inn. I have been by that place probably a hundred times. I've never been there. I was like, this is nice. This is really nice. And it really did my heart good. The couple I married had really spent some time growing in the Lord. You know, before I marry him, I want to talk to him a little bit, counsel a little bit, just, just kind of see what's going on in her life. Because, look, you can get anybody to marry you, but if you wanted a Christ-centered thing, I want Jesus to be elevated, and I want to give you the best, best chance in your life is to make sure that you and your spouse are on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So that's what it's talking about. And when I talked to this young couple, they blew me away. It was amazing. And, and I asked them a couple questions and different things, you know, that I asked people, and you know, and they said, you know, we've been really working through God's word and, and some other uh, studies, and it's really drawn us close together. And, and the young lady, she said, Mr. Buddy, be honest with you. Some of the things I saw in myself, I did not like. And that impressed me because many people don't say that. I said, well, baby, you know what? God's doing a work in your life. That's all right. See, that's what was happening with Paul. He goes, man, what's going on? Do you ever have that moment and go, what are you thinking? I can hear my dad just say that right then. My dad, I would come home, he goes, boy, what were you thinking? And I go, I wasn't. He goes, it's obvious, right? You ever had those moments sometimes? You just go, what were you thinking? But God still says, I love you. Come back home. So I was talking last night. I was talking to a few folks. And it's amazing when you're just hanging out and people are just waiting for the bride and the groom to come out. Some of the things that you'll hear and some of the things that will be discussed, you know. Usually this is some of the questions I get. How big is your church? And I love it. I say, oh, it's about 25 by 70, right? I always do that. I always do because they want, how many people? How many people? <laughs> we got room for you, right? That's what I tell them. Come on, we got more room. Then they say, what denomination are you? I said, Jesus. <laughs> well, that's good. And they drink another beer. <laughs> and then I just kind of follow them around. I say, hey, man, what's up? what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, and so like I got to tell people, I said, God's not sending you to hell because you're drinking a beer. The only way you're going to go to hell when you reject the only way out of hell through Jesus Christ. I'm not condoning that either. I'm just saying people, you know, and then they find out you're the preacher, right? See, what happens is, it's funny, I have my Bible and I had to carry it because I didn't want to lay it down. Then I finally found a spot that's fine. So it's different. It's kind of funny, isn't it? You're walking around with a mullet and they're hey, what's up? How you doing, man? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want a beer? Yeah. I was like, no, I'm good, man. Everything's cool. And I said, well, i got to get ready to go. Hey, y'all have a nice night. And he goes, oh, he's the preacher. Well, you know, have the reverence for the Lord, man. I'm just a man. That's what I always say. I'm going to point you to Jesus. But, you know, they know enough to go, hmm, he's got, he's got that sword. He's got the Bible in his hand, you know. And so, yeah, we should be different. But here's the truth. The journey is real, and sometimes we miss the mark. And I told the guy last night, I said, I say this every week, brother. I'm preaching to me first. And I'd say this most times, I would not pick me, but God's grace is amazing. And I tell you what, he got a hold of my heart, and I'm going to keep walking and climbing and going and doing everything I can. And when I miss it, I'm going to say, Lord, I really missed it today. Help me to get back in the game, because that is the journey. Amen? I want you to see, it's not a sprint. It's not a one time. Got it all made now. No, man. We, got through, we go through some troubled waters. Amen? So let's go back a little bit here. And talk about some of the things that Paul dealt with and some of the things we deal with. Does anybody ever get frustrated in their Christian walk? Man, you guys are honest today. I love this. Everybody online is going, yeah, me too. We can get frustrated. I would please listen, listen to the whole thing. I'm starting out here and, and where it's kind of tough, but it's going to get better. But I just want to be real about this. But frustration, man. So Paul goes back to the Ten Commandments. He talked about the law. Okay, let's tie it back into that. So he's talking about the law, and he says, you know, he, he really starts evaluating his life. You want to get depressed, evaluate your life with the Ten Commandments. Wow, that's rough, isn't it? And then you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that he came. So he goes back through that, he's going, and, he say, and he, what he finds out, what we find out is this. When we look at the law and in the, in the, in the Ten Commandments here, we don't measure up, do we? What you going to do? What are you going to do now? You're going to call on Jesus, right? It shows us our sin. I love this verse here. In Psalm 19.7, I talk about it many times. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect in converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Man, I'd like to think that he has made me wise because I sure was the simple. But I know who I am in Christ. And I'm humbly coming before you today and saying, oh, I sure don't know it all. But I know Jesus. 
And that's the best start you can get. Just like I told that couple, I said, I'm going to tell you what. They, they asked me, you know, would you, would you say the blessing and everything else? And, and I, they were doing their vows and everything else. And, and, and they, they actually wrote their own vows. It was beautiful. My hardest job yesterday was not crying. I tell you, Scott, boy, me and you would have been over there like this. Me and Scott, just, we did some crybabies, boy. When God gets a hold of your heart, boy, he'll get a hold of your, your eyeballs, too. And they were talking about honoring and loving and this and this. And I love this because my grandma used to tell me this. said, don't go to bed mad, honey. So when I got to talk, I said, well, I tell you, I said, I'm really glad you said that. And I've often said that. I'm going to tell you what, I have went a long time without sleeping at times. How about you guys? If you don't want to go to mad, you go to bed mad, you might just be up all night, right? But what happens is when you're up, if you're seeking the Lord, you'll say, Lord, this, you know, is this really a big deal? What's going on? Help me in this area. And then I shared with them, I said, you know, and they talked, they read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. And they were identifying their life through the lens of the Lord and the word of the Lord of what love is all about. I said, that, that's, God, that's what God says love is. It was beautiful. It's fantastic. And I told them, I said, forgiveness is a great thing. Forgiving others, forgiving yourself. And I told them, I said, this right here is what I see in my walk with the Lord. Compassion. If you're in a relationship and there's compassion, let me tell you, you can overcome a lot. Absolutely love, but is it wrapped in compassion? And as we look through this here, I hope we see that we have a compassionate God for us. Amen. He understands we get frustrated. He understands that we're walking this thing out. But be of good cheer. We are secure in the Lord. So let's jump back over here. And, and I, I like this sometimes. I talk to people and they said, I said, well, what are you trusting in to get to heaven? Well, I'm a pretty good person. Anybody say they're a pretty good person? I don't doubt there's a lot of good people. There's probably a whole lot nicer people out there than me, okay? I'd like to say that that's not so, but it probably is. But you know what? On my own, I know how I measure up. I don't. How about you guys? So they said, well, I just try to live my, my life by the Ten Commandments. I love this. I said, really? Can you name a few? Don't kill nobody. That's a good start, brother. That's good. And then I like doing this. How about we play a little game today? I'm not going to pick on anybody. We're just going to have it. So, so, Tim, you got a stopwatch back there? Anything like that? Mike, somebody? Anybody got a watch? Okay. You got my watch here. All right. 20 seconds. Give me 20 seconds. I want to ask you guys to name as many football teams as you can. All right, tell us when to go, Mike. Football teams, come on. Keep, keep going. There you go. You got 10, keep going. 11, I'm on a toe. There we go, 12. What we like, 13? Click, that's it. Okay, I'm going to give you 14. So you got 14 teams right there in, in no, no time at all, all right? How about, uh, how about, how about different soft drinks? We'll do that, all right? Can we do that? Mike, give us a one, two, three, go. Go. Who's counting? Keep going, Doc. There we go. Tim just dated himself right there. Ruby, man, you guys are like 14 or 15 there. Okay, that's time. Okay, okay. All right. Let's go to 30 seconds. How many of the Ten Commandments can you name? Y'all are rolling? Okay, I'm here. There you go, on Angelo. I think we're about eight or nine. Did anybody say keep the Sabbath holy? Is that right? Yeah, I'll just want so, so I know we got at least nine. So I gave you 10 more seconds and we got nine. That's what y'all did pretty good. Because I'm going to tell you what, you can get people, you know what I do sometimes when I say, how many beers can you name there, buddy? <laughs> and I'm saying, that, that's enough. And they go, you got Michelob Light, you got Bud Light. Uh, and then they'll go back, and you got Michelob Light, and you got Bud. I'm like, this is going to be a, this is going to be a tough conversion. <laughs> so what are you getting at, buddy? A lot of times people say they try to live their life by the Ten Commandments. I'll take that watch back. <laughs> That's number nine. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. 
I think that's it. I have to go through my numbers there. Anyway. <laughs> People are going to be re-watching it. What are they doing out there? So check this out. This is, this is amazing. I never really looked at this until this week. Now you say, praise God for Jesus. You know what I mean? For the grace. Let's go back to the law. We're talking about the Ten Commandments. Each one of the Ten Commandments, if you go through there, I've got them written down. I don't want to mess them up here. Have no other gods before me. Right? What else we got? Don't worship idols. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath holy. Honor your mother and father. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. And then it says don't covet. If you look at all of those together, all nine of those are actually speaking to the body. See if I can get this out of my head the way I want to share this with you. Is, is speaking, you can see that. If I'm worshiping something else, if I'm not keeping the Sabbath holy, if I'm not honoring my mother and father, if I kill somebody, you see what I'm saying? Commit adultery, any of those things. That's something that can be seen. What's the one that can't be seen? Coven. Right? I wish I had a big truck like Robert. I wish my grass was as green as my neighbor's. Whatever it may be. You know what I mean? You can't see that. So guess what? That actually deals with the heart. Now, all of them deal with the heart. But you can see the outward. So what happens is, well, the reason I'm saying that is, I've never really looked at that before. So we're looking at the physical in the first nine, pretty much, that you can see and see what's happening. But really, he goes a step far, further, and he says it's a spiritual thing, too. It's your heart condition. That's why we need to continue to renew our minds and our hearts. So think about this. It's the outward and the inward and in what we're looking at here. I said it's, it's pretty amazing to see what's going on sometimes when we're, we're hanging around people. And after a while, really what they're thinking will come out. I mean, sometimes people t or, or joke about something, but there's a little bit of truth in that. Right? I like your new truck, but I'd probably get bigger tires on it. like your haircut, but I wouldn't put it on me. Boy, your dog's smart. <laughs> Smarter than you. Whatever it is, you know what I mean? You know? Right? You know, I'm telling you, that's, you know, they always got to, yeah, yeah, I call it a backhanded com compliment. Yeah. But it looked like you lost some weight, you're still fat. Thanks, appreciate that. I'll save my pants for you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Are we being real today or what? I'm telling you, this, this is, it. you know, why did they, they got to do a little, why, do I, why can't they just be, why can't people just be happy for people sometimes? Amen? I mean, they, because, you know why? Because many times they're struggling, and they want to see you struggle too. Why is that? I want to see people do good. If you got a new car, what, I'm glad for you. I'm real glad I don't have the payment, but I'm glad for you, right? And even with that, that's probably a little backhanded thing. I was like, man, that's good. I don't go, I don't know how they could afford that. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't. I'm hoping if I need a ride, they'll come pick me up in a new vehicle. <laughs> I was like, man, that's nice. I, I, I need to go to Taylor's, you know? <laughs> well, Gail's having a good time back there. That's a D. But it's so true. And sometimes the folks that it's close. How about friendly fire, right? Family loves you, don't they? They'll love you to death, boy. They, they'll get, get you sometimes, you know? Oh, I'm not even going to go there because we're going to have a birthday party when we leave here. My mama today, praise the Lord, is 88 years old. Go, Ruthie. Woo, get the Lord here. Man, 88 years old. And I tell you what, man, that, that's a blessing. I'm not going to miss out on any of that. Hug, honor your mother and father, man. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Bring them a crab cake. They'll like that too. <laughs> so outward versus inward. In other words, we could put on a pretty good show, can't we? But when it's all stripped away, guess what? When the guy hits his finger with the, with the, with the hammer, you're going to see what he believes, aren't you? Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, you know. It's just it's like, what's going on? Because, man, that old man still wants to come out. We're saved. We're secure. But guess what? We're still a work in progress. Amen? I'm going to tell you, it is. It's something else. It's amazing. Like I said, I talked to somebody last night. Man, they, had, they were cussing and fussing and everything. Else. Yeah. And they said, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. They go, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm like, what, what just happened? You know? A conversion right there, man. Well, that's all right. But, you know, it, it's, and our words are strong. Our words are powerful, aren't they? I'll tell you what. In the ministry, you will find a lot of people have been damaged by words. 
They say sticks and stones will break your bones. I believe it. And words will cut you in half. Especially if it's somebody you really care about. I don't think we realize the leverage and the power and the strength of our words when we speak into somebody else's life. Man, I love encouraging people. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. I got to tell you something. I love you, Grandmama, and I love my wife. But it's the hardest women I ever had in my life to encourage. I see the good. They're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> what? Let me tell you what I get. This is what I get every morning at about 530. Which one, babe? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? And then, Robert, I got this down. You know what I do? I pick a side. I'm going to ride it to the ground. I say, oh, the right one. I just go with it, man. Because I like both of them. And I said, oh, I said baby, you can wear a potato sack. It looks good. You're just saying that because you're stuck with me. No, I love you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's just, you're newlywed. You're going to say, he told, he spoke prophecy. <laughs> but it's, you got to laugh, though. You know, I said, man, that, that looks good. Or oh, grandma will cook something. My, wife, my mother-in-law and Miss Karen and some other ones in this room could take a rock and fix it, and it would be good. I'm not kidding. Grandma, well, that's good. Well, I don't know. I was going to put a little more of this in there and that in there. And that. I wonder what would happen. I said, this tastes terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't say that because I've been praying for wisdom. That is not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's over there going. <laughs> you thought I lost some weight. <laughs> you ain't seen that. I'll be like that. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still on hold for my January birthday cake. I said, man, all right. But it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's just crazy. I have no idea what we was talking about. Anyway, the outward versus inward, that's what it was. But the outward, man, I mean, we'll, we'll put on that smiley face, oh, yeah. How many times you ask somebody, how's your day? You ever heard anybody say, it's just terrible? You get a few of them. And then I remember this. I remember this very clear. When my dad was going through some stuff, and a guy came to work, he goes, Hey, bud, how's your dad? I said, well, you know, we've been going through. Hey, I said, he's been going through a couple of. Hey, I'll give you a call. He didn't care. He was doing his own thing. A lot of times people do their own thing. And, and that's just the truth of it. That's the truth. But that's why I told that young couple, I said, man, find some compassion. A little bit of compassion. How you doing? You know what? Now, a lot of y'all have seen this from time to time. You know what I do sometimes? I just call you and say, hey, I don't need nothing. I don't want nothing. I just tell you I care about you. If you haven't got that call yet, it's coming. <laughs> okay. If you don't get the call, I'm sorry. I'm, it's not that. I'll just tell y'all. You know, I think y'all are amazing. All right. But sometimes I go down the road and the Lord just lays somebody on my heart. I said, man, I just, I just need to give them a call. I just need to give them a call. And, man, I tell you what, those are the phone calls I love. Do you get any of them? Every now and then you get some of those. It's, it's nice. It's nice, man. But going about the outward versus the inward, what is God doing in your heart today? I pray that he's doing a mighty work as we walk through this. I'm going to pick up speed a little bit here. So the outward versus, versus the inward. Look what we say here. In Ephesians 6, uh, 12, you guys can read along with me here. It says, for our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right. How many know that we have an enemy? Right? How many know... That he doesn't have like just this little port, pitchfork, port fork. There's a good one. Right, right up there with the bobcats. Everybody watch this. Please. I saw somebody the other day. I saw a guy at work. He says, <laughs> the guy at work said, me and my wife was watching you preach the other day. What's a bobcat? I said, it's vicious. <laughs> it's vicious. It's vicious. It's, it's rough, worse than the cattails. But anyway, but what he sees here, what he's saying here, he says, man, there's, not only we deal with this flesh, but there's an evil one. There's, there's the, the devil that tries to prowl around and get you to the side and jump on your back. But he can't outdo Jesus. He's already been defeated. But we do have to deal with him a little bit, amen? But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to give you the tools to deal with him. Put on the full armor of God. Read the rest of that chapter in Ephesians. Put on the full armor of God. We talked about that a little bit. But we go through here, and we start to see that, you know what, Paul realizes this struggle is real. Now, why is it that we feel good about reading about somebody in the Bible that's dealing with the same thing we are? Because you know what? We see that God still loved them. And I think it helps us say, well, man, if God loved Peter, if God loved them, he loved them, he'll love me, right? 
Yes, he does love you. Think about that. We talked about it the other night on, uh, in the upper room experience. They're thinking, man, this is Passover. We're going to have this great meal with Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, I'm going to die on the cross. <laughs> We're thinking, that's not what we want to talk about today. That's not comfortable. Hey, uh, one of you guys in here are going to betray me. I'm thinking, I'm not hungry anymore. You know? Oh, and then Peter jumps up and says, man, not me. I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm here. Anybody ever had I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Everything's good. I'll see you all later when it turned just like that. That's what he did. He said, you're going to deny me three times. Wow. See, the evil one was working against the situation. But God was in control of the situation. He already knew the whole plan. He knows the plan he has for your life. He has the whole deal secure for you. Amen? So we realize that there's a battle going on in the spiritual realm. Amen? So it gets frustrating. Anybody get frustrated? And everybody said at times, right? But let me tell you some good news. Anybody ready for some good news after all this? Buddy, please tell us some good news. Yeah, went to church today, beat me to death in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the truth is the truth, amen? Here we go. So we went from frustration to restoration, man. God's in a restoring business, isn't he? Take a look at this. But now I want to I come back to this and really drive it home. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, right? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God is in restoring souls and everything else, amen? But he tells us how to restore our mind by renewing it with his word. Amen. The devil don't mind you having a Bible as long as you got it shut, right? He likes you to have, he don't care if it's on your coffee table. He don't care if your grandmother signed it. He don't care if you even got the gold etched letters on there. He don't want you to open it. Because guess what? Inside that is a life. That is the sword of the spirit. Speak that word. We're in a great times now that we can use. I mean, we got Bible apps. We got iPhones. We got all these things. Bible everywhere. But how often do we use it? See, don't mind you having it if you don't use it. Put it to work. Put it to work. Let's keep on rolling. I said right believing will produce right actions, right? The battlefield is what? The mind. Man, so as a man thinketh, so he is. If we're not renewing this and you turn the news on, well, the stock market went down today. <laughs> yeah, okay. Got a recall on all Fords. No, rewind. All Chevrolets. <laughs> all Buicks. All fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Don't write me on that, okay? All right. <laughs> we go. All this stuff, you know, next thing you know, oh, this new such and such muscle drink is the best thing, but now it's causing cancer. Got a new hair product, got a new this, got to do this, and then it's Lowell the Stanley Hammer. You know? If you've taken this or whatever, did I get the name wrong again? Did I get his Was I close? Is that it? What's his name? He's the guy that goes like this, right? <laughs> Oh, man. I will tell you something. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. I went and did my taxes this weekend. Oh, yeah, not pretty. Two and a half hours, man. Two and a half hours. Because I had the great idea that me and my buddy were going to figure out the stock market this year. <laughs> we didn't. And my, and, my, and my tax guy, he's a buddy of mine. He's a good Christian guy. And he said, how's church going? I said, man, God's growing the church. He said, I got a little tip for you. I said, what's that? He said, please don't give them any stock information. <laughs> I said, uh, how much owe you? So in other words, I might get a few things mixed up, but I'll tell you what, when I go by the word of the Lord, that's the best thing for you, amen? And that's what we're going on. So God's word says, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How often are you renewing your mind? I need to renew my mind all the time. Hey, when that enemy comes up, guess what? Turn on the praise music in the house. Dance on the head of that devil. That's right. Keep on going. Everything else. I'm telling you, man, just keep on rolling. Speak them words. We're at a time, man, we can get that stuff. I used to, I mentioned this before when I was learning a bunch of Bible verses. I'd put them on an index card. And I'd have, okay, all these, you know, pertain to salvation, this and grace and this and that. And I'd have them things all the time. I'd have them in my pocket. Okay. All right, yeah. It wasn't like I thought I was going to do a spelling bee. It wasn't like I thought I was going to impress anybody by that. It was for me. Because guess what? I've been in that battle. 
Still got a little bit going on here and there. But thank God that God had been preparing me for some of those things. And when it hit, I had his word and his promise in my life, in my heart, and on my lips. Amen? You, you don't wait till you get down the creek in the boat and find out, I might need an anchor. Right? It's probably a good thing to have that anchor right now. Amen? And I, I want to say this. We don't go to God to, to, for as, as fire insurance to get out of hell free card. We go because he is king of kings, lord of lords. Amen? It's a relationship. Amen? I get excited about that. When I hear people talk about religion, I go, man, I'm glad I don't got that. Or I probably should say, I'm glad I don't have that. Right? <laughs> there you go. But, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I said, man, I'm going to tell you what, God is so good. And I like getting people around and telling them how good God is. Y'all like doing that, sharing stuff? Man, oh, so did you go to school here? No, I didn't go to school there. Did you go to school here? No. I went to Kinkatan. Is that a college? Nope. <laughs> I love it. I said, man, God will use anybody if you just submit your life to him. He will use you. He will use you. He will use you. Right? And they go, man, that's, that's pretty neat. See, when you get to tell the story, it's not about you. It's about what God has done in you and God's doing through you. I go back to that wedding. It was so cool. See, where this, this new couple is going to open up a new chapter to their life. Today, you're sitting right here and you say, man, I, I need to change the page. I need to change the cover of my book. God can help you with that. He can turn the page. He can keep on going. But some of those pages and those paragraphs are painful, amen? How many people like country music? It's good stuff. But boy, you get some of those songs in there, boy, you'd be crying on the way down the road. I can't believe my dog's gone. You know? And now they're getting a little bit more snazzier. They got all types of hooks on there. I like the one I'm so much cooler online. I know that's old, but other yeah, it talks about this guy, man, in his basement, he's about six one. In real life, he's about five two. You know? <laughs> we could we could be all types of stuff, can't we? online and all this but God knows the real you and he still loves you and he still died for you and he still rose for all of us amen so look at that he's in the restoration business but what we believe will start affecting our actions amen you believe that think about that over and over and over you get in there I tell you what when I was in martial arts I used to love that man and did okay uh I got a lot of kicks in, and I got a lot of kicks kicking back. And later on, after I got out for a while, I went back, and they called me the human punching bag. Because I'm going to tell you, you could lose an edge in about five years. I can tell you that. But I remember when I was first into it, and my karate teacher, we went, uh, we went to Longwood College. So they said, okay, man, this is the state tournament. You got this guy. You beat him last year. You're in. You got so you only got to worry about this guy here. This is what I'm telling myself. And my coach said, hey, look, you do one fight, you do one fight at a time. One fight at a time. I said, okay. So, man, I got up there, boom, 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 -ya, -ya, -ya. boom, first one, got it. I was like, oh, man, head getting bigger. <laughs> the pen is coming. <laughs> so I saw the guy that I sized up from last year. Oh, I'm thinking, well, I've got that guy. I've beat him before. I'll go on over here. Not a good plan. Evidently, all that boy did is practice all year long. <laughs> and, and I said, oh, I'm ready. And it's, you get three points and a full point for this and all that. And he turned around. I go, yeah! And he mule kicked me. Boom! I could, I, I mean, I was tasting his little flip-flop. He had, And I looked at him, and I'm like, what just happened? And I looked at my coach, and I'm going over there, and he's going, eh, eh. And he's going. And so I got up again. Boom, the guy hits me again. I'm like, oh, man, it's two to nothing. I got to come around here. This is not good. I'm glad it's not good. And, and my coach said, come here, come here, come here. I said, what? What? He says, stay away from him. He's killing you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Boom, three, I'm out. I remember that so good. He's like, what were you doing? I said, I think I was fighting the next fight instead of that fight. That was a long time ago, and that is engraved in my brain. Sometimes I think we're fighting another fight instead of the battle that we're in now. I had already sized that thing up. I got this piece of cake. Again, I was 20-some years old. At 52, I'm like, uh, he can have it. 
<laughs> I think you're good, man. There you go. Take the belt. But I'm telling you what, through those things, God was teaching me things, teaching me different things and stuff like that. What is God showing you through some of the things that you guys have been through, the battles, the struggles, the things like that? I didn't have the right believing. I was believing. I got it made. I got it all under control. I can do it. You can apply that to anything you like. No problem. I got it. I got it. What I find is God's got it. Amen? God's got it. And I want God to have it because he knows best. And he knows what's coming tomorrow. He knows what's coming down the pipe. And he's got it under control. And we are restored in him. Amen. Let me hit you with one more here. I said, our resurrection, our restoration for, man, I can't see this on my stuff. Our restoration for salvation has been made complete in Christ. I'll give you some scripture for this if you want to write it down. I'm going to read this to you. Colossians 2.13 and a few more verses here. It says, You were dead because of your sin, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. Somebody say amen. Amen. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Man, that's a powerful truth. Colossians, Colossians 2, 13 and 14. And 15. I said, God's made a way. It's the only way. But so many people want to try to do it their way. The older I get, I tell you, I don't know if you get tired. I don't know if you get smarter or you just start listening better. I don't want it my way. People say, how's everything going? Is it going your way? I don't want it to go my way. I want it to go God's way. And you might, that sounds kind of just a little play on words, but I mean, I want it to go God's way. Because I can tell you, there's things that went my way and they weren't all that great. They really have not been all that great. Anybody pray for something and, and say, man, I want this and I want this and it comes through and you go, ooh, I didn't sign up for that. Yeah, yeah. How about that promotion? Man, oh man, I tell you what, Lord, I need that promotion. I, I want that promotion. I got to get that promotion. Then you find out why your boss is pulling his hair out. Amen. Amen. There you go. Sometimes, you know, we just need, Lord, you know what? Lord, this is, this is what I'd like to do. But you know what? You, you guide my steps. You lead me. You, you lead me. And then there's times, like with my job, I was like, I don't really want that job. I'm good right where I'm at. See, I got comfortable. Anybody ever get comfortable? But I got the job. Not comfortable. When they hire you from being a worker bee to the boss, guess what? Everything's perfect, right? Hey, 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 hey. Nope. Guess what? Oh, come on, man. We got to get it done, you know? But you know what? God used those stepping stones in my outside life to help me with my inside life. Amen? A little bit more compassionate, a little bit more understanding. You know, have you ever been in a meeting at work or something like that, and the boss says, we got to do this, 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 and this, and they go, oh, I can't believe that, and all these different things. They don't know what type of pressure that guy's under a lot of times. They don't know what's going on. If you own your own business and stuff, and you're like, hey, man, we need to do this. Why why are you letting the water spigot run? Why are you doing that? Because guess what? They're paying for it. You know, it starts changing everything when you get a little bit better view. Well, let me tell you, God's got the perfect view of your life and my life. There's nothing that he's missing. And so when he speaks into your life, he knows what's best. Amen. He's in the restoring business. All right. Everybody good with that? Let's talk about our destination. Everybody know where they're going? I'm not talking about going to Hardee's or something like that. You know where you're going, right? Destination. I love these, these pictures Miss Tanya comes up with. I, I appreciate her taking so much time with this. Let's look at a few scriptures here today. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they will be, I like this even better, and they will be with me. I'll take a bag lunch and go hang out with Jesus, amen? I don't have to have the buffet. I'm ready. That's it. I said, Jesus stands at the door of our heart, patiently knocking. He doesn't huff and puff and blow the house down. Right? He doesn't get you in the spiritual chicken wing. He doesn't do any breaking and entering into your life. He's available, though. And he's knocking. And he waits for you to answer him. He desires fellowship and community with us. He wants us to be in fellowship with him. How much? Do, how do you know that? Look at the cross. How much does he love you? Look at the cross. But what about me? Look at the cross. Man, 
But don't just stay there. Look through the other side because we have a risen Savior. Amen. But here's the thing. Is the world knocking so loud that you can't hear, hear anything else? Is the world so loud that you can't hear the knock? Man, I'm thinking about my daddy today. When I got my, my, one of my first cars, first my dad gave me a nice truck. But it wasn't that cool. It was nice. But it wasn't that cool. So first thing I did, you know what I did? I put the, the eight track in it. In the Jensen speakers. Anybody out here had Jensen speakers? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Built the thing in shop class. And I built it so big I couldn't get the seat all the way back. So I had to drive like this. But I was jamming. You know? <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's crazy stuff. So later on, my buddies, I wanted a 70 El Camino. My buddy's uncle had one. He said, my uncle's thinking about selling that. I said, oh, I've been saving my money. Tell me what he wants. Oh, I thought, I think I could swing that. I want to talk to Dad. Dad, we got we to go. We got to Somebody's going to get it. We got to, you know, we got we to, somebody's going to get it. We got to do that for sale sign on it. So when I finally got there, the guy said, well, I'm just thinking about it. I begged the man to sell me that piece of junk. It was a piece of junk. It was. I found out the guy that working on the car all day long and all week long, he don't really want to work on his own stuff when he got off. I should have known that when he had the rope around the battery to keep it in place. My dad said, son, we don't, we don't need this. I said, dad, we got to have it. Sometimes you just got to let your kid go a little bit. He said, you've been working real hard. Is that what you want? I said, I got to have it, dad. got to have it. He said, well, see what's going on. The guy said, well, let me sleep on it. He said, okay, I'll sell it. So I went and got it. And my dad told me that night, he said, I don't know how to get through that head of your boy. He said, what do y'all say? It's a rag. If somebody had a piece of junk, we call it, it's just a rag. He said, it's a rag. I said, oh, we can fix it, dad. <laughs> He's like, you must have more money than I know about. We got it, boy. I'm telling you what, I got it. First day I rode it to school, picked up this little girl, went to the 7-Eleven, came back. In front of school, everybody there, talked the car up, everything else. And then, you know, I had to jump down on it when I left 7-Eleven. That was the transmission. That wasn't the tires. I said, man, this thing is awesome. I mean, I haven't even smoked back there and everything else. Blew the seal out of the transmission. And when I pulled up, and the girl said, this car stinks. And the guys were like falling out of there. And so I had to. I go over to the parking lot. Didn't go to school that day. Now, here's something crazy. Most people would have called a tow truck. Too proud. I had a cable. I got my buddy. I said, hey, man, just skip school. school. We tied it to my dad's other truck that, that he gave me. The good to be in drug it all the way to Jefferson Avenue to get somebody to look at it. So anyway, lesson learned. It was all about the inside. See, I, I wouldn't listen. My destination was, it was, was barely getting to school. But see, the ways of the world, my wants were so loud, I wasn't listening to good, sound logic. Now, if I thought about that, hmm, has my dad ever tried to keep, just as a human dad, let alone my heavenly father, I'm going to work to that, has he ever tried to keep anything good from me? No. Does my dad love me? Yes. Did he try to look out for me on every occasion through my life? Yes. <laughs> I had the volume up on the wants way too much. Oh, man, I had, I mean, I was dreaming about my hair blowing in that thing. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, I had it bad, man. I had it bad. Was, I mean, I mean, I was like, I could change them rims and everything else. I mean, I knew I was going to do the pipes. You know what I did? I spent the next month getting a transmission put in it. That's what I did. Can I borrow your truck, man? No, you don't want that truck. <laughs> Can I please add a truck? Well, okay. Be easy on my truck. <laughs> Lesson learned, man. So there's something in there for my kids, I bet. They can get that out of there. But I was listening to what I wanted. See, that battle's for real. You know, I tell you these stories, and they're, and they're true, and, and i got to laugh at myself as time goes by, and, and hopefully they connect to some of the things in your life. It's just crazy stuff. But I look at this. How much more does my Heavenly Father want good for me? He wants to speak into my life. He wants, to, he wants to speak into your life. He wants to share things with us. But here's the problem. There's a thing called hearing versus listening. Anybody know the difference in between the two? I hear you. <laughs> you ever work with somebody? Now my problem is I don't even hear you half the time. You play, you play rock and roll for about 35 years and work in the rocket industry. I was doing something today, and Tanya said, he's talking to you. I go, oh. 
So if I, you all ever see me and I don't answer, I'm not being, you know, snooty. I didn't hear you, you know, because I don't talk to anybody. I'll be like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? So anyway, but what are we hearing? Do we hear the word of God? Are we hearing the gospel message? Are we hearing about God's redemption power? Are we hearing about who God says you are, that you are worth it, you're a difference maker, that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son? Are we hearing that? Are we hearing that Paul did some struggling in his life? But I want to get to the good part there. You just tell me, man, I, I want to catch you right where you are today. Anybody ever suffer loss in their life? Yes. God wants to restore that. He wants to bring that back. He wants to do that. Now, now, I'm not saying he's bringing your loved one home or anything like that. I'm saying that God wants to fill you with his compassion. God wants to fill you with his love. And let me tell you, when we go some, through some different things like that, God can use your life and your situation to help comfort someone else when the time comes. Amen? Think about that. Like I said, if I'm going through a tough time in my marriage, I don't want to talk to the guy that's been married 47 times. I want to talk to the folks who've been married 65 years. You know? How, how, how does that work? You know, what's going on? You know, if, if I'm going into business, I don't want to talk to the guy that's had 17 businesses and say, well, I'll tell you what, bless God, I'll get me another one here before too long as soon as I settle up on this. No, I want to talk to the guy that's like, hey, how, 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 did, how does this work? Go to the author of life, Jesus. And here's what I found out. God can give you wisdom in all types of things. See, I think sometimes people think, well, you just, oh, okay, you're a Bible scholar. That's, no, I don't want to be a Bible scholar. I want to be a businessman. Well, then go to the Lord and ask him, Lord, help me in my business. I saw a thing today I thought was interesting. A guy has a business, and he was mentioning, he says, you know, I think I'm going to implement some of these things in my business, you know, maybe some prayer or this or that or make it available to people. And I thought it was very interesting to me that there was a lot of people posted that said, well, you need to separate that. I'm a Christian, but you need to separate that. You know, you don't want to bring that into the workplace. And I'm thinking, what? What? Man, I'm not the CEO. I don't run KTP. I work for the Lord. Amen? I want to know what God says. People say, y'all going to get a bigger building? I say, well, whatever God wants. We do two services, whatever you want to do. I'm listening. I don't want to go without him. Amen? I'm li I'm, Lord, what, what, what are you telling us? You know? But man... If you are a Christian, your life should radiate that of Christ in everything you do. Again, we still struggle. But did people at your work know you're a Christian? That doesn't mean you go around and grab your Bible and say, hey, everybody, well, let's just go ahead and pray over your lettuce and stuff before we eat. He'll multiply that salad. But you know what? Are we living a life that's representing God well? And realize that, that we will struggle in the midst of that. But you know what? Keep seeking the Lord. Amen? Keep getting with the program. So what happens is we hear things. And I thought the difference in my life, I look at, I can hear things, but when I listen to things, it causes me to go to action. It moves me to action when I'm really listening to something. It brings me to a point of decision. Am I going to move on this or am I not going to move on this? Am I going to step out in faith or am I going to sit back and say, Lord, I, I don't, I don't, there's something in my spirit that doesn't seem right in this. I, I want you to lead me and guide me and direct me. Or just jump out in the middle and say, Lord, I'm drowning, help me. Anybody ever done that? Yes. You know, we'll call, we'll call on the Lord real fast when we start going down, right? But what would happen if we really went to him first and said, Lord, help me? Now, I'm not saying he won't come out and rescue you, because you know he will. But I tell you what, I'd rather walk with him then get into the cattails. Got it right that time. Because I'm going to tell you what, that miry muck is not good. So listen, when I talked about bringing stuff to a decision, here's the decision. What is it from today's message that God wants you to respond to now? And I, and I was writing this down last night. Now. No other way. No other way. There's no other answer. How are you going to get to heaven? There's no other answer but Jesus Christ. Who are you going to put your faith and trust in? There's no other answer. His name is Jesus. Amen? What are you going to, how, what are you going to entrust your, your children to? The Lord. No other answer. Amen? I guess there's other, there's other options, but there's no other answer. He's the answer. He's the answer. 
And I pray today that something just moved you through the time that we had today to encourage you to say, you know what, I'm not going to put this off anymore in this journey that is so real. I am going to go and move forward with what God has called me to do today. It's to, to get us out of our chairs, onto our feet, into the presence of God to move and do what God has for us. And don't, don't get me wrong, it may be sit and wait. It may be be still. And I can tell you what, I have seen God in my life and in the life of other folks. God can make up time in an instant. In an instant. You think, oh, I've got to do this and I'm running behind and I'm doing this. I'm talking about goals in your life. But I'm going to tell you what, if we are seeking the Lord and following his will, you are on time. Don't run your race looking at the guy next door or beside you. Remember we said a, a few weeks ago, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Man, staying in my lane, Lord, but I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you for the answers. I'm looking to you for the guidance. So look at the answer that Paul gets, uh, comes to at the end of this chapter here. Romans 7, 25. And again, I, I just had to pull selected verses for time frame out here. It says, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody say amen. You see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. We can't do it on our own. Amen? But in Christ, we can do all things. This is not to beat you up. It's to pull you up. It's to lift you up. It's to encourage you. Amen? Now, remember I said, if you get a chance this week, read all of chapter 7, but don't stop there and go to chapter 8, because you know I love this one, right? Rolls right on into this. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Somebody jump up and say amen. Man, that's what I wanted to get to, but I had to walk you through the journey. I had to get you through those other things and show you that. So what's some of our takeaway today? When we look at people in, our, in the Bible, we can look at their life and say, man, you know, a lot of times we think, well, they're so super spiritual and this and that, and they came face to face with Jesus and all this. They never had any problems. That's wrong. They had plenty of problems. They had plenty of tough times. But they had to make a choice. They had to make a decision, just like you have to make a decision. I'm going to follow the Lord. Sometimes following the Lord is not a real popular decision, is it? Oh, everybody, yeah, man, everybody's going to do that. Actually, they'll single you out, right? Sometimes you might eat by yourself. When you come to sit at the table, there might not be any other chairs. They got one way over to the side for you, right? But I'm going to tell you what, when things go bad, guess what? They will move you to that table. I've seen it with my job. I've seen it in different things in my life. I've seen it all the crazy things. You know, everybody, ha, 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 happy go lucky. We got a layoff. They say, hey, would you pray for us? And you know what I do, don't you? No, you didn't want to hear about it. No way. You know, that would be the flesh. No, you don't want to hear it. No, I said, absolutely. Because that is a window and that is a way that God will, that we can turn around and show the godly qualities and the attributes that God has, has put in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. All these things, that should be coming out of our life. But look, when they don't, jump back in and ask God to help you. Amen? That's the message today. This journey of life is pretty amazing, isn't it? I'll tell you what, if or when I have grandkids, I'm going to be a mess. I've had little hard-headed boys all my life. If I ever get a little granddaughter, it's over. It's over, man. I'm telling you. That's the, that's the time you always say, oh, you get. Because if her girls want something, I say, all right, okay, okay. I'll do it. Whatever. I'm just pushing. We went to eat yesterday, and I lost Denise because I, I do talk a little bit. Came into the thing. Denise is walking to go in. I saw, I saw Mr. Riggins. I talked to Mr. Riggins for a little bit. Hey, how you doing? I'm saying, I'll be right there. And then I, come, I saw a friend of mine, Louise. I saw, saw him over there. And then I saw Miss Sherry over there, and she had her grandbaby. Looked like Shirley Temple, man. All them little curls over there. And she was rolling around. She, she peep out there. How you doing? How you doing? And all of a sudden, I heard something go. <gasps> she hit her head. I want to jump. I said, it's going to be all right, baby. I was already praying. He must have, she'll be all right, Lord. She'll be all right. Man, how does God see us? Precious. He sees what you can be. He sees everything in your life, man. That's scary. I don't even want to see everything in my life. You ever have stuff play back in your mind? You go, where did that come from? You know? You think, do you ever think this? Let's be real now. How did that happen? How did that play back on my tape and I'm saved? Right? Because like we read, 
There's an enemy. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And even if he doesn't try to kill you physically, he wants to kill your dreams. He wants to kill your hope. He wants to kill who you are in Christ. But let me tell you, that can't happen. Don't let him in. There was a song they played at the old church I went to. Said, don't, don't, what was it? Said, don't give the devil a ride or he'll want to drive. Man, it, don't, don't give the devil a, a ride or he'll want to drive. Because you know what? That's what he, he wants to do. But we serve a mighty, awesome, and amazing God that will walk with us from day to day, minute to minute, second to second. So I don't know what everybody's going through here. I know a lot of folks got a lot of stuff on their plate. I'm going to tell you what. God's got it. I want to tell you what else. The journey is real. But let me tell you, the destination is secure in Christ. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you today. You got me excited just thinking about what you have done for us, what you're doing for us. Lord, I pray for each one, even those that are listening online, maybe listening later on. Father, the journey is real, but your love is amazing. Your grace is amazing. The power of your word just continues to amaze me each and every time I speak it, each and every time I, I hear it, and I see it working in your children's life, I see it working in my life. Father, I ask you to be with us today. And I ask you for those that are listening that are struggling today to realize we all struggle. But Christ is King and Lord of Lords. And I'm going to tell you what. I tell you today, there is no place you'd rather be than in the will of God. It's not always shiny. It's not always what's popular. It's not always what's comfortable. But it is always what's best. Amen? It is always what's best. And I pray today that you hear this message and understand this. This is the best news ever spoken, ever written, ever given. Jesus Christ came to this earth to lay his life down and to pour out his blood for the sin of all men. And if you put your faith and trust in that truth and ask the Lord, Lord, come into my life, forgive me of my sin. Today, I put my faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, Lord. Thank you for shedding your blood for the purchase of my sin. Today, Lord, I am asking you to come in and cleanse me and, and, and live within me. God said, I will do that. He says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Friends, let me tell you, if that's you today, don't leave here the same way you came in. Say, Lord, come into my life. If you're here today and you say, man, buddy, I got a load that I'm carrying. Let me tell you, there is no load too heavy for our Savior. He said his yoke is easy. Doesn't mean our life is easy. He said his yoke is easy. Meaning that he will never leave us or forsake us. He knows our heart. He knows we get lonely sometimes. He knows that, that we miss it sometimes. God never misses it. God's love never fails, and nothing can separate us from his love. So, friends, I pray this is a message that just blesses your heart and inspires you, not just today, not just this week, but as God will plant something in your spirit to recall these truths today so that you can walk and go and do and be everything God's called you to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to sign off to our family on here. Hey, friends, I hope you got a lot out of the message today. Please pass this on. Please share it. We'd love to see you in person sometime at 10 a.m. on Sundays uh, at 9 Cedar Road. Come on out. God loves you, and we love you, too. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen.